we are here in New Orleans um, doing a razor shag demo. And uh, this is probably the hottest haircut right now and it's really broken through um, between, or broken through the lines of sort of fashion and consumer. And so now we have more and more people wanting this particular look. And so I'm gonna show you how I like to create it um, with the razor but I'll also kind of go through a little bit of how to use a scissor if you guys aren't comfortable with the razor at home. Um, step one is gonna be the sectioning. So if you notice the sectioning here, I've got one horseshoe section here, and then I've got two sort of uh, side sections and then one back section. I'm gonna tackle the top and then I'll tackle the sides and then I'll do the back. And the reason why I do this is because um, I want to control the level of disconnection or not. So if I want more disconnection, having these isolated helps me um, push through and not take the back. Um, and it works both ways as well. So if I don't want to have disconnection, it also helps me keep in mind that the back of this section needs to remain long. In this particular instance, we're going to kind of do something in the middle. So my hope is that we have a little bit of a Joan Jett kind of um, fun vibe at the end of this cut. Once I've finished this, this is pretty much the foundation for my haircut. So this is where all the layers are gonna end up at this length. I'm gonna over direct everything to that point and I'm gonna elevate slightly to get that, um, um, to meet my guide. So I'm not gonna hold down, I'm actually gonna pick up a little bit. And you'll notice that my sections are going to be horizontal going across that horseshoe section. It's almost, it's almost more of a square shoe. Um, but you get the point, just kind of taking the hair away above the parietal, which I like to call the interior of the hair, and isolating that first. Tina, for those joining in, can you let us know? We have some people that just signed on what hair cut you're working on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for those who just signed on, I am doing a razor shag. Um, and I will be also using the scissors um, and showing you how to execute with the scissors as well. Just by a show of, uh, if you guys could give me a thumbs up or a wave on Facebook, how many of you guys like to use a razor at home? Ooh, some, thumbs up. some thumbs up, awesome, cool. So just so you know, this is an unguarded razor. I'm using feather plie blades. This is actually a prototype for a new Elevate hair razor, uh, very similar to the feather plie. It is unguarded. Um, I typically cut unguarded. I know that gives a lot of people anxiety. Um, I'll kind of go through in a little bit how I use um, the razor without a guard and keep myself safe and my clients safe because that's really important when you're using this tool. I mean, you can ask any barber. It's sharp and you have to kind of go through some steps and some uh, learn some habits so that you're not uh, putting yourself in danger and especially your client. So I'm going to walk through the mechanics and then I'll show you kind of some of the details, right? So step one, clean section. Step two, fine teeth of the comb. Comb goes right into the hair. And this is like the number one thing I see that is problematic for hairdressers and gives them trouble is how they comb. Um, everyone thinks that the scissors and the razor are like what define the haircut. It's actually the comb. If you're thinking about a scissor or even a razor, right? At this point, when the razor comes in contact or the scissor comes in contact with the hair, everything's done. And for a scissor, it really only does one thing. It just closes, right? So how the hair gets to that point of contact is actually the most critical thing. And the reason why I like um, a nice comb with fine and wide teeth is because it gives me optimal control and it gives me consistency. You know, I'm starting, it's 9 a.m. here today. For some of you guys who are catching this later after the live, it might be midnight. My tension on my hands varies throughout the day depending on how tired I am, how, <laughs> how much caffeine I've had, um, all that kind of varies. And so I don't wanna rely on my hands too much to dictate the tension. I wanna let the comb do that because no matter what time of day it is, this comb is always the same. So having a consistent comb and how I go into the hair is really important, right? So this is what I see pro pro that's a problem I think for a lot of people. They come in and they push down, there's this scooping scooping uh, kind of mechanic. And when you do that, what ends up happening is you end up pushing um, hair back down into the previous section. And so you can never get the appropriate elevation because your comb is always pushing things down. It really exposes um, itself when you're doing graduation or layers because you end up with like heavy, um, you end up with like a heavy weight line in the back um, and it can be problematic. So how you comb is really important. Using the wide teeth, and the nice thing about these YS Park 
um, combs that we have on Elevate, as you can see, there's like a little bit of a little tooth there, and that helps me go through the hair a little easier, easier for sectioning, okay? Once I have that, I, I use the Y teeth just to kind of manipulate the hair around, let some air get in there, and then I'm right back with the fine teeth of the comb. And I'm, it's confusing from a, when you're looking at it, it looks like I'm pulling the hair the whole way through. I'm not. The comb has all the tension. I'm following with my fingers. And then at the end, I grab. With the scissor, here's my guide to be cutting here. With the razor, I actually pull past my guide. I cut on top of my hands. And you can see that guide kind of pop in there. That's what I'm looking for. So you need to have enough hair where um, you're cutting something. It's not individual hairs, but you have um, it's sparse enough where you can see what's happening underneath. And if you've been paying attention, you might have noticed the type of texture that's coming out on my ends, right? So when I first started, I was using a more of a closed mechanic. And so the hair looked a little bit more um, together. Now that I'm moving into the interior of the head, you're going to see my razor move a little bit more vigorously, and you're going to see the texture sort of mirror that. And what you have here um, in your hands is a mirror image of what you have left on the hair. So when you're doing a razor cut at home and you want to see what you've left, quick way to do that is just look at what's in your hand before you toss it and you kind of have an idea. I'm going to keep this up throughout the interior of the haircut. I'm going to try to do a shaggy, shaggy layer. Um, but keep in mind, you know, we're doing this for uh, Facebook Live, so I'm trying to do something a little bit uh, more, I don't want to say avant-garde, but a little bit more fun for everyone. Um, this technique applies if I'm doing a long layer too. So I could be holding this very low um, and cutting uh, with very little elevation and a closed razor. So I'd be moving my razor more like this. And that would give me a more blunt edge, a thicker look, and would not layer it as much. For this particular mechanic, it's the same idea, but I just bring it up. I just bring it up and that's gonna increase my elevation and give me more layers, more texture. And when I finish this next section here, I'm gonna actually take a horizontal and show you guys what this looks like uh, going from short to long. Next section, I'm right at the apex of the head. You know, and on a mannequin, the hair is not as dense as a real person's hair at this point. So keep that in mind. Your sections might need to be a little bit finer. Um, you know, we are trying to practice social distancing. So I have my wife actually on the on the phone now who's handling the camera. We've been in isolation together. Um, and then I have uh, my friend Stephanie, who's reading all your messages to me, um, and Mary Catherine, who's working on our Instagram Live. Uh, so we're trying to keep six feet. And because of that, I have a mannequin and not a model, um, because I think at this point, I think it's just we all have to be kind of careful. And we all have to be doing the right things. I think it's important to treat this moment with a lot of caution. Um, and um, I find that the more cautious I am and the more things that I feel like I'm in control of, the less stress I have. And yeah, you have something to say? We do have a question. Throughout the whole square shoe section, are you keeping the cutting elevation the same? Great question. I'm actually slightly elevating it at this point here. So if you see here, this is essentially the apex of the head. At this point, I'm even gonna layer even more. This is just water with a little bit of the rinseless refresh in there for fragrance, to be honest. Um, so at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lower her head a little bit and that's gonna increase the elevation. So I'll just go ahead since we've got it here, I'm gonna show you what this looks like right now. So we take this on a sort of a, as a cross check, right? You can see the hair is get going from short too long and then here's this piece that i haven't cut yet so at this point here because i've lowered it that peak that angle which looks like this is going to kind of flatten out a little bit i'm going to flatten the curve <laughs> <laughs> i'm going to flatten the curve right now um you know i want to take this opportunity as well as i finish this haircut this is essentially the same technique i've been using right i'm, I'm using my razor consistently open. It's important to move the razor before you come in contact with the hair. If I come in contact with the hair and then move the razor, I'm gonna create a little notch, a little hole. I don't wanna do that. So I wanna kinda of think about this almost like trimmers, right? And so it's just constantly moving and I'm gonna push through the hair. Uh, another way to think about this, if you're curious about my mechanics, you can see how I'm holding the razor, right? My thumb goes here on the side and I hold like this. These three fingers are really important for moving my comb around. 
And I want you to notice the difference because I have this finger locked back. Look how much distance is between the comb and, and her head and the razor, right? When I go grab the comb with this index finger, look how much closer it is to the client. And this is what I was talking about earlier, right? I wanna keep this thing away. So this finger is locked. So if you guys are sitting at home bored, you've got one of these kind of barber razors, hold, hold it with your index finger like such and use this, these three fingers to manipulate your cold, your cold, sorry, your comb. And you just kind of want to spin it around. And that works on your dexterity and muscle memory. What you don't want to do is grab your comb like this. And you can just see how much looser it is. This is dangerous, right? This is how it, what keeps me safe and my client safe is this thing. So the first thing you're doing when you're practicing the razor is learn this technique. Next thing you want to think about is how I'm going to move the razor, right? So I like to think about it like I'm signing my autograph. So here's my name, Tatum Neal. There's my autograph. I hope no one can counterfeit my checks now with that motion. That's what my name basically looks like, right? I wanna pretend my name is MW, MW. Now, I don't know how to pronounce that, so just bear with me. But the reason why I say it's MW is because that is how I wanna sign my autograph now. Right, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Then when I go into the hair, I get a consistent movement across, and that gives me consistent texture. Boom. Cool thing about the razor is there's a lot of variables that you're working with. Um, I treat this as a precision tool, um, but I'm doing two things at once. I'm putting length in, and I'm also putting texture in at the same time. Um, because with the scissor, you have two blades collapsing. All right, I've got a scissor right here. I'll, I'll demo that. All right, you've got two blades collapsing with the scissor. That line is gonna be very blunt, whereas this line is going to be very diffused. So kind of important to think about. And it's interesting because how the razor impacts the hair on a very on a microscopic level um, varies based on how I come in contact with the hair. Do I come in contact with the hair um, more blunt, like on the edge, right? Do I come in contact with the hair more on the flat of the blade, right? So then watch this. Look how much texture I can create by doing that. Right, so how I press into the hair, the angle, the flatness, all that dictates the feel of the hair. And I don't mean esoterically the feel, I mean like what it actually feels like. If you were here and you ran your hands through this hair, you would notice that it feels significantly denser than it does on the end. It's still healthy, right? This is a brand new razor. I'd use Nutriplenish shampoo and conditioner. Her hair is nice and hydrated. There's a decent amount of slip on the hair. So when I go through, it's not damaging the cuticle, but it's, it's, it's kind of, peeling and, and minimizing the edge of the hair. It's like an immediate break-in. Um, so some things that I like to look out for because I think about how that razor goes across the hair is creating balance and symmetry how I come in contact with the hair, right? So if I come in this way and I'm cutting in this angle, then I actually need to mirror that same angle on this side and cut this way. So I'm not cutting across this way. I find a center point, I cut this way, so the razor is pointing this direction. Then I cut this way and the razor is pointing that direction. And that gives me consistency on the end of the hair shaft and that'll give me consistent movement. All right, speaking of your razor, Sarah Renee is asking or saying, also, love this morning education. Thank you, Tatum. Love your razor. Do you have a favorite we make it elevate hair makes it it's a prototype um it should we should have it very soon uh, i'm trying to do all the tools i have here are um, on our elevate pro shop from the blow dryers the combs you can see the comb here is a nice graffiti branded uh comb and uh it's all in our shop elevatehair.com and uh We'll be open. We're distributing. So if you guys want to try this, uh, any of the combs, these clips, which are amazing. These gold clips are on fire right now. Everyone loves them. Um, uh, go to shopelevatehair.com. And I'm literally in process with the manufacturer of these blades. We're just kind of going over the placement of the, the branding. Um, I should have those in the next couple months. So stay tuned. Um, and sign up for our email list if you're, if you're not already so that you can see updates uh, on all our tools. We have these awesome capes. We got a new curling arm that's badass. You guys will see that in a second. So lots of fun tools. They're all curated by me. They're what I think are the best tools. Um, and I try to make them super affordable for you guys. Ronnie loves them. Yay. Oh, yeah, Ronnie, what's so, up? Susie loves the clips, too. Yay. All my friends getting the clips. What's up, you guys? I hope you're 
staying safe out there. Cass loves the flips. They roll and gold, duh. Duh, mm -hmm. exactly. I figured all gold everything. I'm a 2 chains fan, why not? <laughs> Can I mention 2 chains? again? <laughs> it's just gonna tighten this up just real quick. Everyone's loving the flips. Yay, okay. Last few sections, I'm kind of running out of hair here. So I'm not, you know, everything essentially is coming to this guy down here, which I've been moving up, right? So if I were to help, if I wanted this to be thicker, I would have held this down here. All this hair here essentially would not have met, um, but I, I want it to have more of a kind of a shaggy feel. So I'm gonna pick it up. Boop, 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 boop. You notice I'm using the back of the blade here, and that's just for client safety and protection, right? So uh, if I'm moving this way, I don't want to use the front of the blade because then the back of the blade is closer to my client's face. So if I'm going this way, I'm using the back of the blade. That means left, right to left. If I'm going left to right, then I'm using the front of the blade. Um, and again, that's just for client safety. I find that my clients don't usually even notice that I'm using the razor. Um, and that's because I'm, I'm not like damaging the hair. You know, the hair is wet. The razor is brand new. I change out the blade every single haircut, right? So they notice things when it hurts or it sounds like something, right? So having a fresh, clean blade, having um, damp hair that's consistent is gonna keep your hair from getting damaged. And I like to say this all the time because there's a lot of stigma around the razor and razors do not, <clears throat> razors do not damage hair. Hairdressers damage hair. So keep your blades fresh, one per client, and keep, your, uh, keep the hair damp. Last little section, and then I'm gonna essentially assess what we have and then go into the sides. All right, pick that up. Cool, and so we have kind of like a, what looks to be like a mop top right now, but I'm gonna kind of push this around. And you can see these are, my, these are the layers that we have on top. And I think this, this profile is actually a nice illustration of, of the short to long nature of the haircut, right? Short to long, right? And I'll pick up a vertical so you can see what that looks like as well. Right, boom. And boop. So this technique can be done on a vertical. You don't have to do it horizontal, but it's so much easier. And that's one of the things I like about razor cutting. It's all core cutting, right? So everything goes to your center. So I don't have to pick up my shoulders a lot. I get way less fatigue in my shoulders and my arms uh, by utilizing these techniques. And even in these top areas, I find it's just easier to have your client um, or mannequin in the situation dip her head down a little bit than it is for me to try lift up so you'll see me if you and if you watch me cut hair in the salon um you'll notice a lot of my movements look a little different because i'm focused on uh my body position and keeping my body healthy because i want to be in this for the long run so now that we've got this i want to connect in the side so you can see we've got these side panels here um i've got a lot of hair up here so the first thing i'm going to do is actually take some of this hair and just clip it away so it's not um getting in the way of what I'm trying to do and confusing me. Do we have a question? Would you adjust how to hold your blade when addressing ultra thin fine hair? Yeah, so let's just talk about hair types and suitability, right? So um, on thin hair, fine hair, um, sometimes the razor can be nice because it, do, it, can, um, it can cause a little bit of a swelling at the cuticle depending on the texture of the hair, which can make it appear a little fuller. And the nice thing about it is too, is I can, remo I can remove some weight without having to over layer the hair. So I can give someone a more blunt look that has a little bit of a beveled silhouette um, and it gives them actually look, a look of fullness at the bottom. So you can use a razor on, on, uh, on fine hair. I like to think about it pretty simply. And that is, what does a razor do? A razor removes weight and creates texture, right? So it's weakening the hair essentially. If I'm in a situation where um, I've, got my, I've got my college girl coming in, right, and, and she gets her hair cut once a year after her mom yells at her, probably, and she's in, she hasn't had a, had a haircut in a year, right, and she always gets her hair colored, so there's a, there's a bit of damage on the bottom, right? So the bottoms of that hair of someone who hasn't had a haircut in a year 
they're gonna be pretty fine and fragile. <clears throat> in that particular situation, even though maybe the density at, her, at, at the roots would allow for a razor, the area that I'm cutting, because we can't cut any length, right? That area um, is fine and fragile, right? So I wanna strengthen that area um, with a tool. I don't wanna diminish strength there, so I would probably use a scissor in that situation. Uh, but if I was going into a shag, and this is all essentially brand new hair, the ends are super healthy, then I can create a little bit more space and a little bit more movement. So that's when I would go in with the razor. As far as curls, um, you can cut curly hair with the razor. Um, it's again, a function of what is their density, what do the ends look like, and what's the overall outcome I'm trying to achieve, right? So if you have someone who's a, a very curly, like a, a coily four for ABC, a razor might not necessarily be appropriate because that type of hair has a lot of texture already and it typically is a little bit more fragile, right? It's a little, it's a little bit more delicate hair um, in that level. So going with the razor may not be appropriate. Two, three, yeah, I could probably go in with the razor. I might just wanna be more on edge. So instead of coming on the hair flat with the razor, I'm gonna to wanna to come on the hair on an edge. So the ends of the hair are a little bit more blunt. And that's really the only two things, but actually a razor on wavy hair can be quite nice because it can create um, a little bit more space, a little bit more openness and um, more texture, which I really enjoy. So what I'm doing here is I'm assessing this space here to here. Now notice there's a nice hole right here, right? So I'm gonna imagine that this is gonna continue through. <laughs> Unlike real people, uh, the mannequins are quite dense here little pivot point one's nice it's got a little ear right so this is actually the thickest part of the whole hair not normal uh, on a real person so again I'm imagining this line here and I'm gonna start and I'm using the back of the blade to come down and because this is a shag I'm not gonna I'm gonna cut all this length off it would be very easy to kind of continue down and move and keep length another reason why I like the razor it's very easy to go from short to long in a long layer type situation but for uh, today, we're doing a shag, so we're just gonna go for it. Not worried about her complaining, so I'm just gonna do what I wanna do uh, and try to do something fun for you guys at home. Next section, now I'm connecting the dots, right? So here's my line. Again, thickest part of the hair on the mannequin is right here at this hairline, so I'm gonna take a very shallow section. Um, mannequin hair really does eat at your scissors and your razors, so um, making sure your sections aren't too thick important, but also in a client, you don't want to be chewing at the hair. That's what I like to refer to it. You want to be getting through just nicely. So I filled in that space here. Now I'm just simply connecting the dots. Use the tension in my comb to apply tension. I grab at the very end. I slide down. There's my guide using the back of the razor and it's just connect the dots. Boom. And you can see now we've starting to get the look of the layer on the face frame. Next section. I've kind of passed that thick area around the hairline where it's punched in. Um, and we'll just kind of look and see if that's a thick enough section. Ooh, it's almost a little too thin. I'm just gonna go for it, almost a little too thin. Uh, you, if it's too thin, you're, you're cutting individuals hair, individual hairs, you're not getting enough texture into the hair. You're not, you're not maximizing the effect of the tool, essentially. Let me just check this again. A little bit thicker, a little bit thicker, and again, this, this kind of illustrates how this varies from client to client. It's another thing I like about the razor is like every head of hair is different. And how each little hair strand response to the razor is different. So you're kind of learning inside each haircut. You know, you have a plan, you have an idea, you have a strategy. Um, but like all strategies, uh, they kind of fall apart as soon as, <laughs> as, soon, as soon as you start. And the key is to re-strategize uh, and adapt. And uh, on that note, on adaption, I want to talk about that a little bit because I feel like right now we're in a time where we need to think about how we are going to adapt as an industry and as, uh, as a people, as a, as, a, as a global community. Um, I'm going to reference this guy, Charles Darwin. Some of you guys may have heard of him before. Um, sort of wrote the book on evolution, if you will. Uh, but, you know, what he said, and I think this is so important, it's not the strongest or the smartest species that survives. It's the one that's most adaptable to change. Um, and I think that's really, that's really important to think about. Like, how do we adapt to these times? And, and, and right now I know there's a lot of unknowns out there, 
but we have to be ready to change. And I think that everyone tuning in today is making the first right step. You know, if you're at home, um, how are you making yourself better? How are you gonna take this moment to make yourself a better hairdresser? And you, I wanna say that we, Neil and Elevate, um, are committed to, to creating content for you guys. So we're gonna be doing a lot more of these lives starting next week. Um, I'll be back on here Tuesday. I'm gonna try to get my friend Renee, um, who's the North American, uh, I want to say queen, I want to say North American queen, <laughs> the North American director of texture for Aveda. She's going to do some, um, some braids and some looks for you guys. Also, I uh, have Matthew Kazarian who's going to do some stuff. Um, we're starting a new Elevate Academy, so he's going to highlight some of our new stuff going on with that. So I'm just committed to creating some fun content for you guys, doing some education, and uh, keeping you guys sane. Um, this to me reminds me a lot of a hurricane for those for, who are abroad viewing. Um, here in New Orleans, we have to be prepared for hurricanes all the time. And, um, you know, I think it's best to be prepared for the worst and, and hope for the best. Um, but, you know, as a family, as Neil Corporation, we've been dealing with disasters and just stuff like this forever. I was talking to my brother Garrison uh, yesterday um, about this thing and, and what I should share with you guys. And he reminded me of this moment during Katrina. So Katrina happened, it was obviously a disaster, um, but it only happened for the Gulf Coast. And at the time we were distributing to North Carolina and uh, Georgia and, and they were fine and they needed product. Uh, but Louisiana obviously was in disarray. Well, we have the force, <laughs> at that point we had the foresight to always get a generator to keep our business up and running, but we didn't have one for our distribution center um, and we didn't have power for like I don't know like I feel like three weeks two weeks or something like that in our distribution facility um, so we needed a generator and guess what there are none to be had in Louisiana so my brother Garrison and I got in his pickup truck and we drove in the middle of the night to Houston Texas and picked up a big generator and put it on the hitch I'm not a I, I don't the guys did it on the hitch I don't know how that stuff works they put it on the hitch and we drove this thing from Houston back to, back to Hammond, back to New Orleans uh, in the middle of the night so that we could service our clients. And I think that really, um, in a nutshell, sums up our commitment to you, the hairdresser, and to our hair community. And uh, we've been doing this for a long time. So we're gonna continue to make decisions uh, that are in the best interest of you. And we're gonna do everything in our power to keep you guys functioning um, and doing what you love, which is hair. So I just wanted to kind of give a little PSA from our family, say that we, we love you and we're thinking about you and we're doing everything we can uh, to make this process go as smoothly as possible. Um, and to be ready for those who are kind of not working right now, we're gonna be ready to go. As soon as we get the okay and the green light, we're ready to start right back in business. Um, and I just wanna say we're, we're here for you. So. Hit us up via, hit me up via DM if you guys want to talk about anything, have any questions about hair or life or whatever, we're available. Um, and like I said, I'm gonna be doing a lot more of these lives for you. So you're gonna be able to see some cool techniques, some cool haircuts, uh, and we can stay connected. Um, I kind of love that we're in 2020 and we can be together even though we're keeping our six feet. Okay, so some things were happening while I was going on my little PSA. Uh, one is I was trying to check for balance. So I'm using this side of the haircut um, to check for balance, but a key balance indicator is actually in the fringe. So by, by this fringe being balanced, I can with confidence start on this side, boom, this side, boom, and I know that I'm balanced. Um, but I'm also just kind of visually referencing it. Keeping my, this section down relatively low, so I'm not elevating a lot here. I'm trying to cut the hair where it lives so I can make sure the line is gonna be accurate when I'm done. It's gonna be what I think it is. Um, this is also the perimeter of the haircut. This is the foundation, so I don't wanna to elevate too much and I don't wanna to be too aggressive with my razoring. I'm not on the um, flat of the blade, I'm more on the edge. Last little section here. Moving my razor again. Move your razor first, cut air before you cut hair. Fine teeth of the comb. And you can see here, these fingers, I'm bracing my hands, right? I don't wanna be all over the place. So sometimes I'll do that on a client with their shoulder, possibly her face. Um, so I'm 
this finger, these two fingers are holding, and this finger here is bracing. A little subtle thing that you might notice is my finger position here. This middle finger is behind this one, so I can see my guide. If I do the opposite, it'll be hard to do. If I do it like this, I'm hiding my guide. So a quick little tip, pro tip. I don't even notice that I'm doing it, but this middle finger is higher than that, and that allows me to see my guide. Boom, okay, cool. So now that I've got the front done, minus that little hair there, grab that. I'm just gonna assess what I've got and what it looks like. I'm gonna kind of knock it around a little bit. I want it to have kind of a fun texture. Are you getting comments, questions? We have a, a question from Ronnie. Yeah. What's a trick to make sure you don't completely remove the front perimeter and end up with a mullet since it's not Monday? Yes, this is true, it's not Monday. Um, that's a great question and it really happens in your sectioning. So by, by sectioning, can you come over here? By sectioning the front and the separate from the back and having that balance, I know that that is essentially where the front of the haircut is. If I don't want it to be a mullet, then these pieces stay long. If I do want it to be a mullet, then these pieces stay sh go short. And so that's how I sort of do it is I isolate the areas of importance. In a long layer situation, I might have a section that goes back all the way through this way. And I know this is my length, and so I'm always kind of trying to create or, or save my perimeter in that situation. Um, also, elevation. I mentioned that even in this situation where it is a little bit shorter, um, I'm not up here. I'm down here. I want to kind of keep that as low as possible. I actually have a mannequin head here. So here we go. Here's kind of an idea of how I like to think about the hair, right? So this whole section here, this is like my perimeter. So generally speaking, when I'm doing anything here, this front section here is um, zero elevation, right? Because this is where the outline of the haircut he is here. This is what I call the middle interior, right? It's not even on the side, you see it, here's my perimeter. This middle interior, then I can vary my elevation. I can move that up a few degrees if I want to create layers. And then here, the uh, upper interior, that's really where I can have a lot of elevation, right? So I can have maximum elevation here in this, in this region, L elevation but less here, and then no elevation in this, this um, section here. So a lot of times when I'm sectioning, you'll see me section, you, I'll, you'll see a section come across on a diagonal just like this, like this whole, this whole area below my hands, and that's where I know I have zero elevation. So no matter what I'm doing, this is staying down. And then I just have to navigate, well, do I keep a corner or not? I knew I brought this up for a reason. Okay, so now I kind of got like a look, like I feel like pretty happy about this. It's neat. I'm gonna definitely go through and do the fringe again. Um, and I have a finished model here. Now I wanna, I wanna tackle the back. So I'll just take these clips off. And release. All right, so she's got a lot of hair. So I don't, and this is the fun part about it, right? So I can, I can leave this hair, and it can be super, super long, or I can connect it in and, and make it short. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of, you know, actually my finished ma mannequin is short, so I'm going to leave this one really long. Uh, so I'm going to actually try to keep all as much length as possible for you guys, so I won't do a full dry on her. So now we're at the back. Up here, I have my guide from the haircut before. So I'm gonna take a section, horizontal section, just like I did before, and that encapsulates, make sure I get it right at the apex of the head. Important to catch the apex of the head. If you're below the crown and where that head rounds away and you start your guide there, um, you'll end up with a heavy shelf. So you wanna make sure you catch the apex. And again, I'm just isolating hair that I don't need. I'm not gonna cut this hair. Let me get it out of the way these clips to sort of protect me from getting into the areas I don't need to be quarantining that area. I'm going to keep making Corona jokes, guys. I apologize. Boom. Okay, good. So now it's nice. Sectioned off, away, quarantined, if you will. Now I'm going to look at the back.
Step one, dampen the hair, dampen the hair. I don't need it to be dripping, but I want it to be consistently damp. Go with my razor. Come straight down. And then I'm gonna hold this straight out so you guys who are filming, check this out, make sure we're good for y'all. Again, I'm gonna section this hair here. I don't need it, I'm flipping it out of my way, out of, out of my cutting range so that I don't catch something I don't need to. Okay, and I'm gonna just hold straight out and see what we have here. So here's my guide, you can see it, it's up here. Boom. I actually feel like it's a little long for this look, right? So what I'm gonna do, go through here. Can you see? Okay, back of the blade, and I'm just gonna cut away. Using a little bit of the flat of the blade to give this maximum texture. Again, in this crown area, um, on a real person, it's typically quite thick, and so I can be more uh, liberal, if you will, more aggressive with my razor. And I just peel that away. Still kind of in the crown area, if you will. So I'm not in this kind of danger zone here. So I can still be more aggressive. Back of the blade. And just kind of erase it away. I think about it like erasing. Now that I'm in here, I'm going to stop. I'm going to kind of... Um, progressively over direct towards the interior, All right? So I don't want to wrap this around. I want to continue to ever increasing over direction, I believe is the term I heard my friend Gerard Scarpacy from Hairbrain use, ever increasing over direction. Um, and that'll make sh ensure that I keep my perimeter. Okay, now I'm going to move back over to this section here. Yeah, I'm doing vertical sections here. We can see that right here. Can we get in there? Can you see that? Just vertical. So what I've done here right now is I take, I took the area that I already cut, and I'm gonna clip that away. And I have essentially my guide here in this middle section. All right, so here's my guide up here. I'm gonna take a section just off center because my center's already cut. I pick up the hair, and then you can see my guide. Here it is right here. Can you guys see that? There it is, boop, right there. And I'm just kind of coming towards me. And Ronnie, for length, you know, this is where you can just kind of drop out if you want to keep length. I'm just sort of drop, let the perimeter drop out of your hands. I like the feather plie. Um, I like the blades that come in a little blue box. That's my favorite razor um, up until this point, and we'll be having this one come out really soon. Um, the, the blades that they use are just really sharp. So when I was sourcing razors, I wanted to make sure that we could use that blade because it's the best. Now, but again, it's only the best for one haircut. And after one haircut, then it's not. It's, it, it gets dull really quickly. So you gotta change your blade up. And look at all that fun texture. So now what I wanna do is I've got this, again, a mannequin head, so it's not the best hair type, right? If I look here, down here, this hair here is just kinda like, eh, meh. So I'm just gonna cut that out. And I'm actually gonna use a scissor at this point. Use my Elevate Shear. Love these guys. These guys are amazing. And they're, uh, they're handmade in Japan. It's not just Japanese steel. It's actually handmade in Japan. So I'm going to do a point cutting technique. Right? All this was done with razor. So to do blunt would be a disservice to all the work that I just did. So just kind of point cut in here. I want to keep it soft and loose. I'm not trying to do anything blunt. So I'm point cutting. But there is a line. There is a, there is a, there's a strategy here, it's not random. It's, a, it's straight across line. It's just slightly diffused. Right, and notice my point cutting. A lot of people point cut at the angle like this. I try to get it as perpendicular as possible. So that I'm almost cutting like a little individual hairs one at a time. It's more tedious, but the results are better. Right, 
And so then there we go. So I've got my shag. Now what I want to do is assess it and see how the whole looks, how the whole thing looks together. Let's spin her around. We're having a bit of a cape shortage in all of our salons because we're having to go through them so much. So uh, my people at the pro shop asked me to make sure that people know that we've got tons of capes. If you guys need capes for home or for the salon, and I'll be showing you our white cape, which is my favorite um, for long hair cutting in a second. So now I'm kind of just literally just shaking it out and assessing what we got here. It's a kind of a fun, cool shack. Uh, I'm not going to do a full blow dry because I think that's boring. What I'm going to do is show you what kind of products I'm using. Again, I already started with Nutriplenish. Um, I am obsessed with this stuff, but I'm going to use a little bit of this uh, leave-in conditioner. Typically with my shag clients, they're not blow drying their hair. They really want it to be just like a rolled out of bed look. So I love this Nutriplenish stuff because it, it, it gives them a little bit of moisture, um, which helps with smoothness. Next, I'm actually going to use the volumizing tonic. Now you can use Fomolient, you can use thickening tonic, you can use Confixer. I think about it like moisture and hold, moisture hold. And that's like where those two meet is the optimal space for each client, right? So if she has thicker hair, I might use a heavier product for the moisturizer, a heavier hold gel. If she has finer hair, I might use a, a, a lighter moisturizing product and a lighter um, holding product. It's very dependent on the person. Volume Isotonic is my, one of my personal favorites. It's been around forever. Um, I just love it. So I'm going to use this as my holding agent. And you can see all these kind of fun curls come out. Right? Next thing I want to do is I want to take, I like using my like Elevate tail comb, and I like to just kind of lightly position the hair how I think it should look. And I can use this to kind of separate the hair without getting in there with the teeth. So I like a little tail comb in this situation. And then of course, just, just my grabbers, classic. <laughs> All right, now I got the product in there. Um, now I'm gonna diffuse, just for a second. I'm not gonna be on this for two seconds and then I'm gonna go to the, a dry style because it's boring. Um, this is really cool for the Parlex blow dryers. It is a silencer. Silencer? No silencer. Silencer. No silencer. So, I hope none of my clients are watching. If you're my client and I put on the silencer, that means I want to talk to you. There's no silencer. Never mind. So I'm just going to kind of diffuse this. I don't want to disrupt it. You can also power dry if you want. And then once you've power dried it, where do you get the silencer? Um, ShopElevateHair.com. But look, it only works on Parlex blow dryers. And then here's that white cape that I talked to you guys about. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of thermal styling uh, with our new Elevate. Let me make signs. These are bad. Uh, so it's one barrel, guys. So this thing comes. Get it? It's got one digital base and then two barrels. So when I'm traveling, I only have to bring, it's like having one, blow, one curling iron instead of two. I have two of them, sorry, just for convenience. So you get two, two looks. Depending on the hair type will dictate what kind of tool you should use. In this particular situation, I'm going to use a small bear cur curling iron. And I, can, I have two options here right, when I'm thinking about it. I can use a thermal protector or I can use air control. Nine times out of ten, I like to use the air control. Um, I just love the brushability of it. But in this particular situation, I'm gonna use the thermal protector on the ends to make sure they're nice and soft. Sometimes when you do a uh, messier 
um, blow out, like I just demonstrated, the ends can look a little like they didn't get enough attention. So I'll go in with that, and then I'll go in section by section, and I'll use this. So first thing I want to do is section off the crown and start on the top. I'm sorry, start on the side. So I'm going to take my air control. And then I go on my iron. You can do a couple, di couple different ways approaching this. You can use the clamp and do a, a wrap. Notice I'm leaving the ends out, checking for temperature, just to give it a little bend. Or if the hair's a little longer and you feel like it, a better technique for you, you can take the hair and you can just wrap it around the barrel like so. Notice that I did two different, um, I did it opposite, right? So what I've just did is I created a little space here and that's what gives it that beachy look. So next section I'm gonna take here. It's really important that you guys take the same thickness of section each time. My friend Alan Ruiz taught me that a long time ago. And uh, this section I'm actually gonna do away. I'm gonna use the clamp in this particular area. And what I'm doing is I'm testing for heat. So I wanna make sure the heat has come all the way through the hair. So if I can put my hand on there, um, that means it's not quite hot enough. And then I'll just release. Now, if you notice, this, this was a little too tight in my opinion. So what I'll do is I'll just actually go through and pull it and that'll loosen the curl. So you'll see me do that throughout a service or on a mannequin or a client where I'm doing the curl and then I'm pulling it accordingly. All that varies from person to person. So depending on their hair density, you may or may not have to, to pull. Um, most people I find that it works on a pull. And in this particular situation, I found that I, I like the smaller barrel. Let's try the big barrel just to see what it looks like and see if you feel like there's any difference in the weight. I'm gonna continue to go away from the head back. And I'm leaving the ends out, right? That's gonna give it that sort of beachy look, just lightly touching and then we can see. So it's a little bit of a softer curl. Similar, but different. And obviously those are two different things. So now I have to decide what do I like better? Do I like the smaller one or the bigger one? I'm gonna actually do some of the big on the bottom and then I'll do some of the small ones on top. That's why I like having two. Am I losing people on this? How's it going? Yay! Yeah. Yeah. I'm just gonna keep doing this um, back. And it's got these nice little um, heat resistant plastic ends here so I can grab and stabilize without burning my hand, which is nice. Pretty much lost all the feeling in my fingertips. Thank you, hairdressing. But there's still some there, so not burning yourself is always a plus. Again, I'm just touching to feel and make sure that it's hot enough before release, and then I'll do a little bit of a pull. Right? Nice, and again, see how the hair that's out and straight, how it looks nice. And that's kind of the look. Do this back section here, and then I'm gonna move on to the other side. One last little bit. Again, treating each piece of hair the same, All right? So everyone gets the same amount of hairspray. They get the same amount of thickness and section. Consistency with your product application and your sections and how hot you get the hair is gonna create consistency in your style. So I'm not gonna let this go until I feel the heat from the barrel push all the way through then I release, and then I give it a little bit of a pull, and you can see how it drops, drops it down. Okay, let's continue on the top, on this side. Um, I was really actually liking the larger barrel in this area, so I'm gonna continue on with that. So 
Same section every time. Boom. It's a little too dense. Resection that. Tail comb. And we did sort of, we did toward, I mean, away from the face. So this one in the back, I'm going to do toward. So changing the direction of the curl every so often is going to give you a, a, a less contrived, more of that beachy look that's so in saw right now. So again, everything was sort of towards uh, going away from the face. This one particular curl I'm pushing towards. Feeling the hair, it's not quite warm enough. Now that I feel my skin is on fire, I'm gonna pull away. There we go. And again, I'm gonna pull down, pull down. If there are any cooks out there watching somehow, you know what I'm talking about too. You guys have no feeling either. Combs, make sure all this hair is nice and neat and together. I'm starting to lose length here. This is the top of my shag, so I'm gonna go back to uh, my smaller barrel right after this section. <laughs> one more time, one more pass. And this is just very, this is very visual. So there's technique in here and what I'm doing, but um, I'm deciding based on my eye what I like. I'll separate that out a little bit. Cool. Now I'm gonna go back to my smaller barrel for these sections. And this is really just all feeling and what I think should, it should look like. Um, one of the reasons why I like to diffuse and to um, leave some natural texture in the hair is because I can play off of those bins. Um, this hair was um, power dried and so it's a little straighter than I typically like to work with. But that's kind of why I like to sort of leave the hair damp. Spinning this around. And then one more little section here. I'm losing length. It's very visual, you can like pull the hair while it's still hot and adjust what you've done. A little bit of curl here. Sort of shake out and see what we got. I'm gonna drag this down a little lower actually. So I'm thinking about where I want the curl to be and where her eyes are. And so I'm putting the curl and the bend a little bit lower. Same thing with this section. Where are her eyes? How can I accent those? Hairspray, boop, 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 boop. Grab that like this. Just to give it a little bit of a bend. One more piece up here, guys, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. Um, come back Tuesday. We're gonna do some more fun stuff. I'm doing a social media presentation for our Aveda Art students um, Tuesday afternoon. And then at 3 p.m. Central Time, I'll be back here doing something, uh, probably doing a haircut. Um, again, a different one um, or a style, and uh, it should be fun. So keep paying attention to at Neil. Um, check out Elevate Hair as well for updates on classes, Elevate Hair Academy, and this is gonna be, we're just gonna make the best of our time together. So um, if you guys have any suggestions, you wanna see a particular type of haircut or a style, um, let me know, let us know what you wanna see. I've got Alberto, our director of hair color for Neil. He's planning some cool stuff for you guys. And I'm also working with uh, my friend Savannah, um, who runs Elevate Color. Uh, we're gonna do some fun color uh, as well. So a lot of cool stuff, but hey, look, I'm here for you. You tell me what you want and I'll come in here and do it. I'll, I'll even shave heads in here, whatever you guys want. Just let us know. Um, here for you. Last section, this is actually a critical section because it's at the top. So what I wanna make sure is that this is nice and smooth before I go in with the iron. And sometimes what I'll do if I feel like it's a little fuzzy or coarse, uh, again, in New Orleans, it's humid, things like that happen. Check this out, I'll actually take the curling iron and I'll 
press it on top, almost like I'm using a flat iron. See, I kind of just come across the head like that. And that kind of lays any type of fuzz down. Take a bend right here. Done, okay? After that, I would use a little bit of air control. Let's check out her fringe a little bit. Let's see if that looks nice. Yeah, fringe is nice. I'm gonna go through actually and texturize a little bit. These are dry cutting shears, obsessed with these. I thought dry cutting shears are BS, they're not. And I'm just gonna use the, sorry, a late pink comb, I'm gonna use the wide teeth to brace that and I'm just kind of going in texturizing this a little bit more. Her eyebrows are a thing maybe, and let's try to sh highlight those. But usually when I'm looking for a fringe, I'm trying to figure out what's gonna work best for the person's features, right? So pro tip, if you guys can't decide, take your hand before you start the service, start at the nose, and then move it up. And this hand is essentially like a fringe, so I can say, oh, does the fringe look good here? No, where does it start to look good? That's still too heavy. Oh, it actually looks nice on her a little higher up. And I do that with every single client. It's not always the same. Quick visual representation. Put your hand here, move it up, and that'll let you know what looks good. Just kind of dusting these little bits off here. Point, 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 point. This is all done technically before. Now I'm just kind of like having fun. I'm gonna go underneath the hair. It's so thick on this mannequin. Let me do some deep, deep point cutting. Why are dry cutting shears not the yes? Why are dry cutting shears what? Not the yes. Not the yes? Well, no, I, oh, why they're not BS. Um, let me show you this because I just, it just sounded gimmicky to me. I hate gimmicky stuff. Here's a regular, here, focus on my shirt, right? Let's come, to, come close. So if you see, this is my precision shear nice and straight. Notice these. See, there's like a little bit of a curvature to them. And so that allows the hair, it pushes through the hair a little nicer, more gentle, doesn't pull. And you can't quite see it, but there's a little bit of a curvature to the actual edge of the blade too. So it just glides through the hair easier. Um, I, I don't know what to say. I don't know why technically, other than there's a little bit of curvature in the way the blades are. I just know how it feels on the hair. So I like to scissor or comb with these guys uh, they're they're pretty awesome and all of our scissors are like 350 so they're handmade in japan but 350 dollars full price sometimes we run specials you can get them for even less than 300 but that's such an affordable price for a shear some shears go as much as a thousand dollars two thousand dollars crazy stuff um 350 handmade in japan can't get better and that's for both the precision and the um dry cutting Cool, so now we've got that done. And I'm, now what I'm gonna do is just kind of shake out the side, run my hands through it, and just let it kind of be. So there's my beachy, beachy style. And then if she was real, you might take some pictures. And I might get so bored over the next week or two, I might just start taking pictures of mannequins. It might come to that. Cool, all right, so here we go. I've got my Kind of a good representation you know you've got your kind of natural diffuse it's already started to dry natural diffuse shaggy cut and then you've got a bit more of a shorter fringe proper a little bit more of a refined style here um and we've got my elevate black cape white cape if you guys need capes these white capes are awesome and they've got the logo and white on the back so cool. So that is our first Facebook Live. Um, thank you so much for being here um, and paying attention. Um, share this with your friends. Even though it's live right now, it will live in perpetuity. So share that with your friends. Um, I'm gonna open up this moment to answer any other questions you guys might have um, before we let go. And come back Tuesday, we're gonna be here. Um, pay attention to the Neil channel um, and also Elevate here. Elevate Hair, and we'll let you know all the things. Oh, and go follow Elevate Hair Academy. It's brand new. Uh, lots of cool stuff coming out in the summer. Questions? Awesome. We just have one. John wants to know what were the brand of those shears? They're Elevate Hair. Shop elevatehair.com. Can you get in here? So these are our Elevate shears. 
and they're awesome. Five inch and the dry is five and a half. Cool, anything else? All right guys, love you so much. Stay safe, wash your hands.